Okay, welcome to coffee lecture number 25, which is on basics in design. Um, why is design important? Because there are lots of publications. So uh, in 23, there were more than 7 million new papers a year. So if you want to get noticed and read, uh, design and typography is, is important. How to improve uh, design and typography? There are a lot of different measures you can use, like font size, like the font, uh, the font type, the lead, the lead is the space between the lines, the font width, that's uh, the distance between the characters, alignment, uh, left, right centered, the length of the line, that's also very important, but I will show you the background or the type or grid area. So let's start with all the possibilities usually Microsoft uh, Office provides uh, to you. So you can select a lot of different fonts, font types. Uh, you can put in background to make this as colorful and uh, as possible, but most likely no one is, is will to read this. So it's, it's really difficult to read this because it's just too busy, too noisy. So if you improve the background, uh, now it's just a black background, it's much easier to read, but it's still not fun to read this. Um, if you align the font size, so if the text is in one font size, it's a bit better, but you still have all these different font types and colors. Uh, so if you use just one color, right, uh, that's getting better, but you still have these features uh, which uh, Office uh, provides you with the uh, yellowish surroundings. Uh, if you reduce this, uh, then it's still difficult to read because the font is in, in capital letters, which is hard to read, and the distance between the lines is, is also extremely small. So this is really difficult to read. Um, if you remove the capitals, you immediately see it's much, much easier to read. Um, so capitals are something sometimes nice, but for a, a long text, I, I think they are not appropriate. So capitals removed, is it's much better. If you allow a bit more space between the, the characters, you can see they're all squeezed together to make as, as much as possible characters into one line, then it's it's much easier to read. And next, if you approve the lead, the distance between the lines, so there is enough air between the lines, it's much, much easier to read. So this is a text you most likely are will to read. You can improve also the type area. So the length of the line is better. You have more space on the left and right. Um, and if you improve the alignment, because here you have these little holes between some words, uh, there is a lot of space uh, and your eye has to jump, then it's difficult. So if it's, for example, a center to the left, uh, it's much easier to read. And if you improve the length of the, uh, the line, the text in general, then it's going to be read. So this is a statement people are willing to read. And of course, depending on on your audience, on your device, it's better to have a white background instead of a black background. So how to do this? First important, uh, you have to write and still content matters first. So it's important what kind of content you have. Uh, design comes next, but it matters and you have to decide first, is it going to be read on screen or is it going to be read on paper? And then you have to select the right parameters and the layout. If the information is going to be read on screen, you should use a font which is optimal for display. Uh, you should use short sentences, short paragraphs, short lines. So there is one official dis there is a dis uh, official display font for from ETH Zurich, which is Arial, the most common uh, font. Um, and other good display fonts are, for example, on a Mac, a Verdana, or Calibri. If the information is going to be read on paper, you should limit yourself to two fonts, fonts that are optimized for printed materials. You should use one font for the headings and one for the text. And headings are usually in a sans serif font, which is, for example, Helvetica, Geneva, Lucida, Sans, or Arial. And serifs are these little dots uh, at the characters that should help the, the eye to read more faster, more quicker. So the, the main text should be in a serif font and very popular fonts also for books are Times, uh, Minion, Palatino. 
And this is an example of serif fonts. And serif fonts, there is a one sentence, a famous sentence in German and also in Switzerland, a sentence that has each and every character of the uh, German alphabet in its sentence. So Franz jagt dem komplett verwahrtlosten Taxi quer durch Bayern, allows you to see how each character looks like from A to Z, each character is in the sentence. And there's a sentence also for Switzerland, uh, which you can see here. And you can see what kind of fonts these are. And you can see some fonts need more space, some need less space. And Korea is a special example because each and every character needs the same space. That comes from the typewriter area. Uh, for office purposes, there's also one official text font for ETH Zurich, which is again Arial, which is not very convincing because it's the most used font. But for professional printed material, ETH decided again on her own font. It was first Dean Pro, and then it changed uh, about two or three years ago to Dean Next. The Dean uh, font is a family, which is also used on the German Autobahn sign. So if you drive the German Autobahn, you will see uh, all the signs are in the Dean font and the headings of the magazine from American Chemical Society, Chemical Engineering News, they're using also the Dean font. And there are also fonts for special purposes. So if you have to pretend uh, you are poor, you need money and you have to write a grant, uh, or think you are a department that needs more money, you ideally write to the Schulleitung, we are uh, broken and we need more money. So this is a free font you can download, which is called Armenschrift, that gives the image of a very old, uh, dirty typewriter. There are also political fonts. So this is the font which is called Greta Cortesk, which is based on the handwriting of Greta Thunberg, which has also only capital letters because she's writing this post is only in capital letters. So there are many, many millions of possible fonts. Uh, but important is also, as I said before, the length of the lines because shorter lines are easier to read. And it depends also on the space between the lines. And as a rule of thumb, a limit to 60 to 80 characters in book or magazine type material is ideal for reading. Here you can see this is a line which is really, really long. And imagine this would be an entire page you have to read. So you always have to move from the right to the left and move your head. Uh, so you get uh, dizzy probably after a while. So this is a text no one wants to read. And if there's only one word in the line, there are people that believe that you can read much faster. So there is this app called Spritz where you can get any text be read uh, easily because there's only one single word in a line and you they say you can speed up uh, to uh, 300 words per minute or even more so here you can see that um, you can try this on yourself and try to read a text with 600 words per minute um, if you have this text uh, send it right on left uh, because you want to have it look nice then it it could also happen that you have these big holes because there is no hyphen and then your eye has to jump uh, and this is particular bad if you have a, a low lead between the lines and as you can see on the left on the right it's better but you still have to jump from on to wednesday to the next word there then there's a little gap between university medicine and zurich so it's nicer if you align on the left or you have what uh, typographs call rect hyphenated so you have partly hyphens so it's easier to read on the right hand side it moves from the left to the right but on the right hand side it's more or less almost the same line of the lengths. And if you look at newspapers, this is how newspapers are printed. They have these short uh, columns. Uh, so this is a Neue Zürcher Zeitung because this is easier to read and they uh, have this distance between the lines ideal for quick reading. And it's the same for any other newspaper. So this is the New York Times. They have the difference, uh, the same system. Another important field is the type area. So this is somehow the playing field, like in sports, like in soccer, uh, there is a certain field where you are allowed to play and you shouldn't go 
out of this play field. So this is mostly a, a crit definition. So you have a certain number of columns and here in the grayish area, you are allowed to play, place uh, text, place images uh, in the gray field and you should stick to this grid. In this case, you have the six uh, times six grid. Uh, and the same system applies at ETH Zurich. ETH Zurich uh, has a, a very flexible grid with, I think, 25 uh, little steps where you can move uh, your text and image. So what you can see here with the blue lines and in, in gray, that's the play, playing field for text and images. And then at ETH, you have this label in certain limited number of colors where you have to place the title, but you can move it along the blue lines as you wish and uh, change the size. And the same is for PowerPoint, not only ETH PowerPoint, but PowerPoint in general. Usually there is a field for the title and there's a field for the text of your PowerPoint and you should stick in this playing field. But of course, uh, PowerPoint doesn't prevent you to open up a new text field and place informations there. And you can add more and more text fields instead of writing in one field in the official playground. You can place little fields for text and animation or whatever. And uh, that's the same with a new template for ETH. Uh, they also have defined a text field and a title field. Uh, and they decide in a, in a wide landscape format with very long lines, with very small distance between the lines. So if you would go to the conference and present this slide, uh, that would be no fun to read because the lines are really, really too long and there's not enough space between the lines. But this is what ETH suggests, uh, the title on top. So you have a defined field for the title and you have a defined uh, field for the text. But of course, as I said, you can change this and add it uh, things. And then you get slides which are as busy as this one. So you, you can't see here a playing field these images and textual information was just copy pasted, partly readable. Uh, uh, the reference is not yet readable. So it's a really busy slide. And this is another example where someone obviously added over the years acknowledgements to his slide deck and added names and always used a new text field. So this looks pretty cluttered. Uh, and I think that could be improved. So I tried to do a slide which doesn't look nice. So these are three books, which I recommend for anyone who is able to read German. And I could make a PowerPoint slide and I try to put in as much information as possible. And so uh, this looks really not very appealing. I have these holes here and then there is text at the far end. And so if I would stick to the grid to the playing field, then it's less information, but it looks much more appealing. And the information I want to provide you with is, is much more attractive and more immediately visible. Uh, for those who do not understand English, I can recommend these two books, which are also in the library. So if you go to our catalog, click apps, you select other subjects, uh, you will find auxiliary skills. In within auxiliary skills, you find design and visual communication. And if you click on design and visual communication, you will see a list of books we have. Uh, so this is a curated list of books that help you to improve your design, your visual communication. And you can easily borrow the books like the book here for better data visualizations. Uh, as a scientist, you always have to do posters. So you communicate through posters. There's a lot that can go wrong. Basically the same two busy posters. You put in too much color, too much text, too many images because you always find, oh, this is an in interesting, important image. And this in table that is should be on the poster. And then their poster is, is really like Dadaistic art. Um, and then you make the font size too small to get all this information on the poster and it's hard to get the message from the poster. So here are a few examples. Uh, again, the title is not really very much visible because it's small, it's in black, it's in capital. Then there's something which is probably the introduction with very long lines. So it's hard to read, you have to move and move. And there's a lot of frames and so you don't know what belongs to what. 
Uh, this is another example where the title is more visible, but there is a frame, a red frame to the frame, which is not really necessary. And at least you have an understanding what's the introduction, the results and the model. This is a, a poster which is much more easy to understand. Even from distance, you can see what it is about. Uh, you can see the teaser text in, in bold font, the smaller lines, easier to read, clear, limited number of images at the end. There is a facet. This is an example of an announcement of a talk which I found once in the elevator. So in the elevator, you usually write for 10 seconds or less. Uh, so no one is going to read uh, this introduction of a talk. Uh, it's also difficult to read with the capitals and very long lines uh, of the extract and speaker highlight is also too much detail. And a week later, this poor guy was giving three other talks and it was about the same. The announcement was not very compelling. The nicest thing is that they put his photo on, on the flyer. Oh, this was also uh, something I found in the building here uh, at an ex for an exhibition, a very long text. Uh, and because the text was very long, the font was reduced and reduced, and the space between the lines was also reduced. So sometimes the characters meet each other between the lines. Uh, so this is also not very appealing to read. As I said already, there is corporate design for ETH Zurich. So if you want to stick or you should stick to corporate design of ETH Zurich, there's at the websites for the staff, staffnet at ETH Zurich, information about the corporate design. And there are also templates. There are templates for all kinds of material, posters, presentation, brochures, and so on. And you can download uh, also templates for poster in uh, Illustrator and PowerPoint. If you want a coffee lecture card, there are a few copies here, old ones in German, English. Uh, you can also download it through the link, which is also provided in the chat, or you can simply drop me an email and I will send you a digital coffee lecture card. Last, I would like to announce uh, the next coffee lecture, which is tomorrow by Leo Batchett, and he's presenting Truckbase Plus, uh, which is an information hub an important one for pharmacists. So if you're working in the pharmaceutical sciences, uh, you shouldn't miss the coffee lecture tomorrow. Thanks. <laughs>